Right, hello. Uh, so my name is Juan Pereiro. I'm a lecturer in Cardiff University, and I want to talk a little bit about my main activity, research activity in Cardiff, which is the uh, low energy electron microscopy uh, of uh, semiconducting material. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit <laughs> what, what this is about. Um, we live surrounded by electronics. We are constantly interacting with the computer or with the PlayStation or with the phone uh, or with a car, which actually has quite a lot of electronics in them. Uh, the electronics that surround us is actually not going to disappear, but will keep on increasing uh, and eventually uh, slowly make our life different, hopefully easier, uh, and there will be uh, more change as the change that we have seen uh, in, the last, in the last few years. For example, with the appearance of the Internet of Things, the, the communication just not between people, but, when, but between uh, items, right? So the cars will connect with each other and enable us to have driverless cars or our fridge will order food when, when we are running out. We won't need to, to, to worry about these things. So we will have healthcare uh, uh, at, at, at remote uh, healthcare facilities. Um, so the evolution of, of electronics will actually affect quite a large number of, of, of industries as the ones that I have in the slide, for example, automotive, healthcare or communications or robotics or aerospace uh, and so on. Um, the electronics, all the electronics that we have around are based on uh, a particular chemical element which is called silicon. Uh, the thing or the, the, the special thing of this of this element is that it's a semiconductor and then uh, it allows us to we can control whether this material conducts electricity or it doesn't conduct electricity. And it allows us to make very, very, very small switches, uh, electrical switches that that either uh, allow us to conduct electricity or not conduct electricity and this conducting or not conducting allow us to have this one and zero, uh, uh, either a zero or a one that, that um, are the building block or the, the foundations of computing. Uh, so that, that's, that's silicon, that's, uh, that's the, the material that we have. Uh, in 1965, uh, uh, Gordon Moore, um, uh, wrote, a, wrote an article. Gordon Moore was, was a co-founder of Intel uh, and, and wrote an article uh, talking about the future of, of the electronics when, when, well, I mean, the electronics were, were actually the computing was, was starting. And he said that the uh, number of components in integrated circuit would increase or would double every, every year from there on. And he was thinking about the five, 10 years after 1965, but it actually has, has, hold, uh, has held until today. Uh, you can see in the, in the graph, all the, those points represent one uh, particular chip, uh, uh, computer chip. Uh, and uh, the y-axis is the number of these small switches that I was talking about, the transistors, the number of small switches within a computer chip. And on the x-axis is just the um, is just the the year, uh, and what we can see is that it has actually been growing. It has, has been doubling every year until now, and now we are starting to see a slowdown of the growth of the of the electronics. And in order to keep that development, because we want to keep uh, developing uh, electronics in order to uh, keep on. Uh, helping us, let's say, in order to, to make our lives easier as uh, all the electronics that, that we live with today have, have done. Uh, we are looking at uh, new materials uh, in order to add uh, new ways of, of making computing and new ways to transmit uh, information. Uh, and therefore we are looking at uh, compound semiconductors. You may have heard about compound semiconductors. Uh, because it has been a big, very large investment around uh, South Wales. 
Uh, and in particular, we are looking at 3.5 materials, and in particular, gallium arsenide. 3.5 materials are uh, compounds of one element of the group 3 in the periodic table and one element of the group 5 in the periodic table, and you have it in the, in the slide. Um, so, uh, for example, in gallium arsenide, the group 3 element would be gallium, which is a metal, and the group 5 element would be arsenic. Uh, so we would have a compound which is called gallium arsenide and it's also a semiconductor as, as, as silicon is but with the particular uh, characteristic that it actually can emit light uh, and and what we want to do is to have switches but it's not that it don't it's not a switch of electric current as in the case of silicon but we want to have a switch of light, and then we can do computing with light, we can do electronics with light, and those electronics will be faster, more efficient, and more powerful, and we can keep on evolving uh, the electronic systems, our technologies. Uh, semiconductors are, uh, uh, these, what, what these, these materials that I'm talking about, semiconductors, either silicon or gallium arsenide, they are crystals, right? And what the crystal means, what I mean by crystal is that, that the atoms are arranged in a periodic fashion across. So we have a, a building block like you have in the, in the slide. On the left, you have the silicon. In the middle, you have gallium arsenide. And that periodic arrangement of the atoms uh, extends over the whole of the material effectively. Right? So that the square is effectively your building block. And then you put the square next to the square next to the square. And then you build the, the whole of the crystal. Uh, what we do uh, uh, with, with these layers is to uh, we create these crystals in different layers and we can, uh, in order to make devices. And with these devices, and as you, well, you, see, you see one example in the right, they can actually be uh, very complex. Uh, the, how, how we do it, uh, how we build these devices, how we put these building blocks, these atoms uh, arranged in, uh, uh, in a periodic fashion. We put them there, we create a new, a new layer, and how, how, the, how do we do this is, uh, is through a process called epitaxy. Uh, and this is what I'm going to try to explain. I have a, a little video. Uh, what, what it consists of is uh, we have a crystal, right, which we call substrate. It is, it is already formed. Uh, so we have our atoms arranged in a periodic fashion. Uh, and then we are going to have a, a bulk material, a piece of uh, silicon, or in the case of gallium arsenide, a piece of gallium and a piece of arsenic. We are going to heat them up and we are going to evaporate. Uh, those materials. And then we are going to uh, evaporate those materials onto our uh, substrate, right? Or onto the crystallized or the What is going to happen is that when we evaporate, there are atoms that come out of, the, of, these, of these materials. We are going to create a beam of these atoms. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's use the silicon as an example. So we are going to have a crystal ready form uh, of silicon or something else. Uh, but the crystal already form, and then we are going to have silicon, we are going to heat it up, atoms will come out of the silicon, we are going to create a beam of those atoms, and those atoms are going, we are going to focus them on our uh, substrate, on our already formed crystal. When the, the, those atoms arrive to the surface, because our substrate is going to have a certain temperature, of usually quite high, uh, the atoms that are to the surface are going to have a little bit of energy to move around. Some will leave, some will not. Some will stay moving around. And eventually, we'll find a position where their energy is minimum or uh, lo the, the lowest possible energy, and they will stay there. And in this way, we will form new layers of material, similar to what the video is. Of the, Obviously, this, this video is just a simulation using lentils. It's well, not a simulation, it's, 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 a, it's an animation using lentils that I have done. But I actually have a, 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 a more advanced video that actually simulates with, with the actual physical parameters. It can simulate how the atoms behave. 
And uh, what I wanted to uh, illustrate in, in, in here is that actually once the atoms arrive, there is no a particular uh, way they are going to behave it's, it's, or the new, new layer are, are, is going to grow. It will depend on a number of factors. It will depend on the uh, temperature of the substrate. It will depend on how much material we are, we are evaporating. It will depend on um, the other material, if there is any other material present ar around, or it will depend on the pressures that we um, do the experiment at. Uh, so there will be a number of factors that, that regulate how, how, the, how the growth goes on. And uh, there are the, uh, three examples effectively in, in this simulation that could happen. There are more ways, but these, these are three examples. Uh, in the first example, what we have is atoms that arrive on the surface and they fall clusters. The atoms are going to always prefer to be as surrounded as possible. With, uh, they are going to want to be surrounded of as many atoms as possible because they feel more confident. <laughs> uh, and, and if they feel more comfortable, feeling more comfortable usually means that you, you have less energy. Uh, you, you are more relaxed. So in the, in the case of the atoms, that's what it means. They are going to try to have more atoms around. So if uh, you have, if, if the atom has one atom on the side and one atom below, it's better than if they just have one atom below. Uh, so when the atoms arrive, uh, a cluster will be formed. The atoms that arrive will prefer to join the edge of the, of the cluster, and then these clusters, effectively, that are only one atom high, uh, or its height is only one atom, they will grow, 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 until they all coalesce and they form a new layer. And then new cluster will be formed in the new, on the new layer. The new cluster will grow, 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 another layer, and so on. Uh, sometimes it happens that our crystals have, because we cut them like that, or, or um, uh, because we have pre-prepared them in some way. Our substrates have already steps, so we prepare them that way. Uh, and what that, ha what, what, what that makes is that all the atoms that arrive will join the steps. Uh, so what we will see is that our steps will actually uh, grow, grow, grow. And effectively what we see is like the steps are flowing on one, in one direction. But what is happening is that we are creating new layers uh, as this, uh, which, which uh, is reflected in the steps effectively flowing in one direction. Um, the last uh, type of growth that, that this uh, simulation shows is what happens when the atoms that arrive to the substrate, onto the substrate, uh, they don't have much energy. Uh, they cannot move much around. Uh, so what happens is that they form clusters but because they cannot move much around, they are not going to be able to reach the edges of the other clusters. So they just keep on growing and they, they form these uh, big blobs or big uh, mountains, roughness around the surface. And sometimes that's, that's what you want. Sometimes you want uh, to grow one way or sometimes you want to grow the other way. It depends on, on what the, the device that you're trying to, to achieve um, requires, right? Uh, so that brings me a little bit about what I do. Uh, what I do is low energy electron microscopy. So we image samples using electrons. So uh, the using electrons allows us to see uh, smaller things. Effectively, it allows us to see one uh, features on a, on a sample that are one atom in height uh, and around 10 atoms in length. Uh, but the unique feature of this uh, microscope is not that, that we use electrons because there are lots of different microscopes that use electrons, is the fact that we can make movies of the, of the processes, right? So we can grow crystals uh, inside the microscope and we can make a movie of how the, the crystals are growing. Um, and therefore it allows us to create understanding on whether the crystal is growing in one way or the crystal is growing in a different way uh, and so on and, 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 and create uh, knowledge uh, that will allow us to, to grow new materials or new structures and, and so on uh, in order to, to generate new, to, to be able to eventually create new devices and new functionalities. 
uh, this is an illustration of uh, the what 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 is different from our microscope with respect to uh, a traditional uh, epitaxial growth, right? So. Uh, traditionally, on what people do in manufacturing is if you want to grow a new uh, a new material or a new device, what you do is someone tells you, I, I want this kind of structure in order to grow a new device. Uh, so you devise your experiment, you, you grow your set of samples, then you send the samples to a colleague, they will look at how the atoms are arranged, another colleague will look at how the surface is, uh, and then you get all your information and you decide where uh, you want to change your, your conditions and, and then you keep on going around, around, around until you get to the samples that you have been uh, requested uh, and then those samples will, will, will eventually uh, end up in a device and so on. In our system in Cardiff, uh, we have everything in one place and we can actually look at the samples during the, the growth, so we don't need to uh, go around and around, but we can see at the same time that they are, we are growing, whether we are uh, achieving what we wanted to achieve or, or we aren't, and then we can change the conditions. Uh, so it, it effectively accelerates the, the process and creates understanding. The, the, the last slide is, is effectively just, just to show you uh, a few videos that we have recorded very recently. Uh, in the first case, we have uh, two, two, two representations of the same thing, one in black and white, one in color. The color represents the different uh, arrangements of the atoms with, or, or on the surface, right? So if you have yellow, the atoms will be arranged in one way. If you have red, the atoms will be arranged in a different way. If you have blue, the atoms will be arranged in a different way. On the left, you have a droplet of metal, and that metal will, will uh, when, when we start the experiment, that metal will diffuse, will move across the surface, and that will generate growth of material and changes in, in a structure on, on the surface. So it just shows how we can see in real time changes in the structure of the surface. We can see growth. Uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, so it illustrates the, the ability of our of our microscope to do uh, to do this kind of work. Uh, this uh, it, it illustrates how our microscope effectively is, is, is unique. I, I want to highlight that the, the microscope is actually unique worldwide. It's the only it's the only microscope that can uh, look in real time at these processes. Uh, in, for for these particular materials for 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 uh, three 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 fives, uh, other other there is no other microscope in the world that that can look in real time to to at these materials. The second video actually uh, illustrates the the appearance of a surface that wasn't stable, so uh, a new a new type of surface pops up and disappears, uh, and people thought that that these surfaces were actually stable, but they, they are not. So the, there are uh, patches of material that have a different, a different structure here and there, and the patch appears and disappears. And the last thing is just to illustrate what we do uh, once we have to the observations. We don't just uh, say, well, we have observed this, but we try to understand it and we do a model of what is happening on the surface. Uh, uh, and what we are seeing uh, in that in the in that last video is to how the the at low temperatures the processes are a lot uh, the, the surface has less all the atoms in the surface have less energy and the processes are a lot more rough the surfaces are in general uh, more rough right it's, it's similar to what we are seeing we were seeing in the previous simulation right that the, the atoms cannot move much and then you end up with a rough surface so in this case it's, it's similar. And as we increase the temperature, uh, the surface is a lot is a lot smoother. Uh, so I just wanted to transmit that how how uh, we work with our unique instrument uh, uh, to 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 enable us to 
understand what is happening on the surfaces and, and that will ultimately enable us to uh, grow new materials uh, and build understand uh, so, so to build understanding to, to enable us to create uh, new materials and new technologies uh, that hopefully at some point will will make your lives uh, easier uh, and and that's all I wanted to say thank you very much uh, and I hope I will see you soon in Cardiff. <laughs>